well, the most obvious thing to do is start flipping bits. So for example, we take a Word document that we actually saved out of Microsoft Word. Maybe it's a couple megabytes long. It's some huge file that we've created. We flip maybe 10, maybe 100, maybe a couple thousand bits in it. We load it up in Microsoft Word, and we see if we can find a part of the range for Microsoft Word that causes it to crash. Another thing we can do, and this is one of the techniques often used by penetration testing tools based on fuzzing, is modify selected fields. And the model here is that our test case has some known structure, that is to say it's a valid HTTP request. What we're going to do is target parts of the HTTP request that are known to frequently lead to vulnerabilities in servers, and we're going to selectively modify those. So we might take, for example, so we might, for example, take the request size and just replace it with some random number and see if that triggers a buffer overflow in the web server. Another thing we can do, if, if we have a parser for our test case, is modify it using its grammar. So we can, for example, add, remove, or replace tokens in a test case are also subtrees of the abstract sy syntax tree. All right, so let's finish up by looking at a short mutational fuzzer. And what I have here is a five-line Python program that was made kind of famous by Charlie Miller's talk, Babysitting an Army of Monkeys. And this talk is pretty fun to watch, so I recommend that you um, Google that and look at it on YouTube. So what Charlie Miller claims in this talk is that he found an enormous number of bugs with his five lines of Python. And so what it turns out is that the five lines of Python are missing are missing quite a, quite a bit of code that you need to make this work in practice. And I've added comments sort of explaining what these are. So what we would first need to do is load a file into a buffer in memory. And so the file that we're going to load is going to be a PDF document, a PowerPoint document, a Word document, whatever it is that we want to mutate for purposes of creating a random test case. What this code does is first, first assigns into this numrights variable, which is basically deciding how many places inside the file that we've loaded we're going to mutate. And so now we're going to loop over that range. And every iter for iter every iteration of the loop, we're going to make up a random byte, then make up a random location within our buffer, and then mod whatever value was there with a random byte. So what does that mean? We're basically picking some, totally randomly picking some places in the buffer to mess with and messing with them. Then we're going to save the buffer back to disk, run whatever our application is. So run Windows Media Player, PowerPoint, Acrobat Reader, whatever it is we're trying to fuzz, and look at its exit code. And so its exit code from the operating system is going to tell us whether it died or whether it didn't die. And if it doesn't die, then we're going to have to wait a little bit and then just kill it. So that's a failed test case. If it does die, then we're going to want to save the buffer off into some sort of a location where we can examine it later. And in either case, then we're going to start over. So hopefully what would happen if we made this code real by writing the rest of it, and this is going to be a challenge program for your assignment at the end of this unit, is we would basically have a large pool of documents or files or whatever that we can use for fuzzing. We'd start this thing up on some sort of a fast machine. Hopefully, ideally, we'd start up a copy for every core on the machine, and we'd go, go on vacation. We'd take a week. And when we came back, ideally, it would have found a bunch of vulnerabilities. Now, it turns out that a lot of people have been using this sort of tool on the common utility programs like Acrobat Reader and PowerPoint for a number of years now. So it may be the case that if you do this, you're not going to find anything on the latest version of Acrobat Reader. And in fact, if you do find something, it's actually pretty interesting. And I hope you'll share it on the forums. Now, on the other hand, if we want to actually get some easy successes in order to, and then, you know, this isn't for purposes of finding real bugs, it's for purposes of understanding random testing better, what you should do is find some old versions of Acrobat Reader or PowerPoint or whatever, get those on your machine, and fuzz those. And almost certainly, using some sort of an infrastructure like this, if you wait long enough, you'll be able to find some sort of a problem in those applications.